Here are some reflections for All Saints Day here in the year 2020. Since most of you are Catholics, it might shake you up a little bit when you get to heaven to see thousands of folks there who are not baptized Catholics. But what will you not see? You won't see a single person who has been saved in any other way than by the precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Vatican Council stated, and St. John Paul affirmed at the beginning of this millennium, all this holds true not only for Christians, but also for all men of good will, in whose hearts grace is active invisibly. For since Christ died for all, and since all men are in fact called to one and the same destiny, which is divine, we must hold that the Holy Spirit offers to all the possibility of being made partners in a way known to God in the Paschal Mystery. There are mysteries in life we won't know fully until we are eternally united with the all-wise, all-loving God. Yes, the Catholic truth offers us the whole truth about salvation. The sacraments that admit us into the kingdom and nourish and heal us on our way. And the community in which we learn and live our faith. It is the straight path Christ established for human beings to become saints. Jesus Christ is the only way, truth, and life. Blessed be his holy name. And in heaven, we will all be members of the great and innumerable throng, clean in hand and pure in heart, skin of every hue that is human, holding palm branches and praising God forever with our mother Mary, and St. Michael, and all the angels of God. But, as St. John attests in his letter, the Father knows us, but the secular world does not. There may have been a time, back in the Middle Ages, when society was Christian, where even the village and city council first consulted the parish priest when there was trouble or concerns. But when this virus from China struck us nearly a year ago, it did not take long for secular authorities to close the door of our churches, declare worship of God in a plague of worldwide effect to be non-essential. And in some states, that's still the case. The First Amendment to our Constitution has been trampled upon this year by thousands of boots, and that's just wrong. But the secular authorities have mutated over the past century into people who may say they're Christian, may say they're even Catholic, but in their day-to-day -day rulings, in their day-to-day -day pronouncements, they act like God and God's law just don't exist. And quite frankly, it's likely to get a lot worse if a political party that has adopted death as its mascot gets full control of the national government. We may in the next five years or so be literally challenged to die for our faith, to adopt faith of our fathers as our song as we are driven to the scaffold. So saints in training, how do we assure ourselves that our life destination, no matter what is the cause of our death, is the embrace of the Blessed Trinity? Jesus established the pattern right here on the mountain. Yes, we must let the Holy Spirit convict us of our sins and repent of them. That's our violation of the Ten Commandments that are not merely suggestions. Yes, we must work to expel sinful thoughts and actions from our lives. But we can't just leave a hole there we must also aggressively labor to model ourselves on Jesus and Mary and our special saints. How? Here's the, here's the way. Each week, take one of the Beatitudes Jesus taught on the mountain. Choose one that you don't do because you're a nice man or woman. You already do it. Maybe you think the world around us is just great. Well, 
find something going on this day that is just bad, like the 800,000 abortions each year that dwarf the fatalities from this novel coronavirus. Mourn these dead children. Stand at one of the polling sites this week with a sign supporting a pro-life candidate and be ready to explain from your faith why you support that woman or man who's running. Or maybe you've developed a habit of admiring using pornographic images in magazines or on the internet. And remember, there is no such thing as soft porn any more than there is a soft lie. Focus then on purity of heart. Don't throw away the printed stuff. Shred it. Wipe the garbage from your hard drive. Pray to the Blessed Virgin Mary that she intercede for you. When you are tempted, think of her. Ask the Holy Spirit to make you pure. He always answers yes to that prayer. There are eight Beatitudes. Consider them to be eight challenges. One more thing about that. All of us in the U.S. need that first Beatitude. All of us are in some way or another materialists. We have too much stuff. Rummage through your closets and give what you haven't worn for a year or more to the poor, like to St. Vincent de Paul Society. Each day, practice, practice, practice the Beatitudes, and you'll find yourself more and more thinking and feeling like the saint God calls you to become.